Hello, my name is Rachel, and I work for the charity Ski Off. Ski Off, the Scottish Catholic International Aid Fund, is the official aid agency for the Catholic Church in Scotland. Ski Off helps families in poor countries to grow enough food to eat, to get an education, and to recover when disaster strikes. Ski Off have two patrons who inspire our work and guide us, St. Margaret of Scotland and St. Oscar Romero seen in the picture here. Romero, as he is popularly known, was a 20th century Latin American archbishop who stood up for the poor and marginalized people of El Salvador. We'll learn more about his life and death and the continued impact he has on the world today. República de El Salvador, more commonly called El Salvador by English speakers, is home to around 6.5 million people. It's the smallest country in Central America and sits along the Pacific coast. It shares borders with Guatemala and Honduras. The official language is Spanish and the majority of people identify as Roman Catholic. During the late 1970s, the Salvadoran people faced terrible violence from paramilitaries. People were often killed or disappeared from their homes. The Civil War lasted for more than 12 years and saw extreme violence on both sides. During the Civil War, civilians were terrorized and deliberately targeted by death squads. St. Oscar Romero spoke out against the fighting at the start of the war and stood with the most marginalized communities as government repression, armed conflict, and censorship began to take hold. St. Oscar Romero was born in 1917 in San Miguel, El Salvador. At the age of 14, he entered the Youth Seminary of San Miguel and was eventually ordained a priest in 1942. He was first assigned as a priest in his hometown, where he quickly grew a reputation for his passionate sermons. Over time, Romero was appointed as a bishop in the capital city of San Salvador, where he gained popularity among the conservative and elite upper class of El Salvador. They saw Romero as sympathetic to their views, given his notable critiques of politicized priests who were encouraging the laity to take an active role in bringing about changes to El Salvador's social and political systems. When Romero was made Archbishop of San Salvador in February 1977, many believed he would curb the Church of the Liberation Theology movement that had taken root. However, things began to change when just one month later, Romero's friend, Father Rutilio Grande, and his two companions were ambushed and killed on their way to Mass. Father Grande had been very outspoken against the government on behalf of the poor, and many believed this led to his assassination. After the murder of his friend, Romero refused to attend any government ceremonies or events, which fueled tensions between the archbishop and political powers, as well as conservatives within the church. By the end of 1979, things were becoming increasingly more violent, and Romero was receiving death threats. Despite these and other dangers, he continued to speak out against injustice. He said, I want to clarify one point. The news of death threats to my person have been much repeated. I want to assure you, and I ask your prayers that I be faithful to this promise, that I will not abandon my people. Rather, I will run the same risks with them that my ministry requires. Oscar Romero was assassinated on the 24th of March, 1980. Romero was murdered by a single shot, fired at him while he celebrated Mass in the Hospital of Divine Province in San Salvador. On the day before he died, Romero asked the government and the army to stop the violence against the people in El Salvador. He said, In the name of God, and in the name of this suffering people, whose cries rise to heaven more loudly each day, I beg you, I implore you, I order you, in the name of God, stop the repression. Romero was buried in the Cathedral of San Salvador on the 30th of March, 1980. Over 250,000 people came to say a final farewell. During the ceremony, there was an explosion and shots were fired. More than 30 people were killed and many more injured. Witnesses claimed that army snipers fired from the roof of the National Palace. After Romero was killed, many people called for him to be made a saint. 
However, there was also a great deal of resistance within the church by those who opposed his theology and felt his assassination was ordered for political rather than religious motives. However, in 2015, Pope Francis declared Oscar Romero a martyr, saying that he was killed in hatred of the faith. Just three years later, in 2018, Pope Francis canonized Oscar Romero along with six others. In 2020, Pope Francis also declared that Father Rutilio Grande and his companions Manuel Sorosano and Nelson Lemus were martyred in hatred of the faith as well. This opens the way to them being officially recognized as blessed. Since Romero's death, gangs and cartels have expanded their influence, and violence continues in El Salvador to this day. The country currently has one of the world's highest murder rates, with poor and marginalized communities most strongly affected. Romero's impact can still be felt both in El Salvador and around Latin America, where he has been informally named San Romero de las Américas. Many murals can be found of him throughout El Salvador, depicting his life, assassination, and the community he fought for. They also often contain his quotes, such as this one which reads, Si me matan, resucitaré en mi pueblo. If they kill me, I will rise in my people. Many Salvadorans keep St. Oscar Romero's memory and example alive in the face of continued violence. Tina Hernandez was fortunate enough to meet Romero. She says, When I was 19, Oscar Romero came to celebrate Mass in my community. I united the local children and brought them along. He saw that I was trying to inspire young people, and we started talking about God and our faith. He was like a saint to me. He was so friendly and calm and really understood what people were saying. It's difficult to find words to describe the impact he's had on El Salvador. The church now has a stronger position in the community. He's shown the church that they must always fight for the poor people in the community. He taught the people and the church to love each other. St. Oscar Romero was faithful to God and to his community until his death. Even though it was difficult, he never walked away from the path before him, the path of righteousness and faithfulness to the Lord. Romero's death while celebrating Mass shows us how deeply committed he was to the sacrament and the promise of the resurrection. May we look to St. Oscar Romero for inspiration in our own lives when we too are faced with difficult paths to follow and fear of doing what we know is right. Let his unwavering faith in God provide you with comfort and inspiration during your own trials in this life. Please join me in this prayer to St. Oscar Romero. Let us not only ask for him to strengthen our own faith, but to bring peace and healing to the people of El Salvador. Loving God, give us the strength to be humble, to be faithful, to stand with our sisters and brothers. Give us the strength to be like our brother Oscar, completely committed to Christ. St. Oscar Romero, pray for us. Thank you for listening, and thank you for learning more about one of Skioff's patron saints, St. Oscar Romero.